So today's video is five ways to stop recluttering your spaces and start owning them the way that you want to. Now, this is something that has taken me like three years to really figure out how to do this. And these are five ways that I use on a daily basis that really help me to stop buying things and stop refilling my space with things that I don't need. Now, let's start with why we usually refill our spaces when we empty them. And I feel like a lot of it is like you see things that are new or you see things that maybe are on sale and you say, oh, well, I'm not gonna see this again, or maybe you feel like you even need it, and so you go and buy it, and a lot of times that's not actually a need, it is a want. And the other reason is that a lot of times when we're first learning how to declutter, we have this big empty space, and when we see empty spaces, a lot of times in our brains, we see the need to fill it. And so I wanna talk about some ways that you can stop yourself from doing that, because it is something that I personally have done so many times is refill my spaces and it's been a very frustrating process. So I want to stop you and hopefully help you before you go down that road. All right, number one is where I think everyone should start and that is having a good grasp on your money and knowing where your money is going. So I am actually working on a video right now that talks about how we have taken charge of our money and we do a lot better with our money and knowing where our money is right now. You need to start by downloading some apps like the apps for your credit cards, the apps for your uh, bank accounts and putting them on your phone. The more times that you have access and knowing where your money is going, the better you're gonna do at not overspending and not buying a bunch of things that you don't need because you know exactly how much money is on your credit card or how much money is going away from your bank account and into these things that most likely you don't need and they are just like an immediate want. So downloading the apps that you need, downloading Mint um, will really help you know where your money is going as well. So there are several things that you can do on your phone right now that will give you a better understanding of where your money is going. And if you are anything like me, um, you know, just like three years ago, I had no idea about uh, my money or where it was going and I left it all up to my husband, which meant that I felt very out of control when it came to spending because I had no idea how much I was spending or if I was overspending until the end of the month when we'd have a talk about it. So if you want to really start taking charge of not overspending and not buying a bunch of things that you don't need, then start with the very simple thing of going on, downloading those apps for your credit cards and your bank account, uh, making sure you know the passwords and how to get in, and then really see where your money is going and start writing down when you are spending things. Because uh, for me, there's lots of apps that you can actually use um, on your phone that you can write down your spending. Um, but for me, I am a very like visual hand of the paper kind of person. And so um, I will link it below, but it's something that I'm actually working on for my next video as well. If you hit that subscribe button, you'll get it. Uh, but it is how I am writing down every time we spend something. And so that I am more consistent with knowing where my money is going as well. So download those apps, that's number one. Get to know your money, get to know where your money is going and that will actually help stop you when you do go to the store. After that, I actually got this tip from this amazing woman named Tiffany Alicia. Um, I'm not sure if that's said correctly, but she's an amazing uh, financial planner kind of person. She's a big advocate for women taking charge of their money, which I absolutely love, especially Women's Month. So. Um, she is somebody that I have been following for a while. And what she says is uh, when you get ready to buy something, think about these four different aspects of uh, where your money is gonna go. Do you need it? Do you love it? Do you like it? Or do you want it? And I'm gonna break that down for you really quickly, but if you go look up, like uh, I think her, she's like the, Budgetista, oh, she's a budgetista. That's, I think, like you can find her on our web her website, um, amazing. But she talks about, do you need it? Now, this is a need is like shelter, food. Uh, is it something that's gonna keep you safe or your family safe? That's a need. It is something that is so pressing that it has to happen right now. Then there's something called love. And that's something like, 
I would love to take my family on an amazing vacation. That is something that um, one is going to last you a long time. It's gonna last you for the rest of your life because you're gonna have those memories that you built with your family. It's also, when it's something that it's a love, it's gonna last you a year or more, okay? So you can't say, I love those jeans because most likely if they're cheap, they're not gonna last you more than a year. So if they're a love, they're not just something that is stylish for right now, they're something that you're gonna keep or that you're gonna remember for a very long time. That's a love and that's something that you're gonna start saving towards. The next two categories are things that she talks about that you don't actually have to have and they're what we spend a lot of our money on, unfortunately, as people. So that's your want and your like. A like is something that's only gonna bring you very short-term joy. Like, I like ice cream, so I'm gonna go get an ice cream. Or I like my coffee in the morning. It does bring you joy, but it's very short-term and you have to do it over and over again. So those are things that you can start assessing. Is this something that is giving me enough joy that it's worth my money? And if it is, then great. If it's not, then maybe we need to slash it. Like, we got rid of Netflix and it was something that I thought we needed um, because it had some shows on it we really liked. But once we got rid of it, we realized there were so many other things that we actually really enjoyed uh, to watch. And so that 20 extra dollars a month was just a want and not a, obviously it wasn't a need, but it wasn't even a love. Um, and then the next category is, is it a want? Is it something that is just an immediate gratification? Um, going to the store when you walk around Target and buying those jeans that are super in style right now is an immediate one and it's most likely because Target is pretty cheap and because uh, Target only goes with fast fashion, it's most likely not gonna last you too long. It might last you a couple of months, but that's probably the whole length that you're gonna keep those things. So, and if you're really trying to save, remembering that wants and likes may give you immediate joy and may give you something that you think is gonna last you a long time, but thinking about, is this something that I really love? Is this something I'm gonna remember forever? Or is it not? And if it's not, it's something that probably you can put back and walk away. All right, so this next one you've probably heard many times. And I know when I was first starting out, I would just be like, like gross, like this is not me. But actually being more grateful for what you have in your life will actually stop you from buying all those wants and likes and work more towards only getting your needs and your loves. So what I have started doing is that I have a journal that I write down things that I'm grateful for. But even when I go to bed, if I forget to journal, I'll just say something that I'm grateful for. I think when you can find whether it's little or big things that you can be grateful for, it really changes your aspect of how you're envisioning your life. If I were you is either get a journal or if you're not great at writing things down, then just think about it when you go to bed. Like what is something great that happened to you today? And if it was an awful day, maybe you're just grateful that you have a place to sleep because there are definitely lots of people that don't have that. And I do have a book that I definitely recommend. It's called Joy. And uh, it is a book by Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. And they wrote this amazing book about how to find joy. One of the big takeaways that I took from that is that when you are in a really hard situation and you're going through a lot, just remembering that you're not alone in this universe, that there are other people going through the same thing you're going through or going through worse. And that no, it doesn't make it easier what you're going through, but you remember you're not alone. And that really, will help you find something to be grateful for. All right, friends, so we're already on to number four. And number four is something that I think everyone can do and you could do right now. And that is when you are getting ready to buy something off Amazon, off Target, you're going into the store, that before you go and buy that thing or go to the store, I want you to think about, is this something that I need right now, like we talked about before, or is it something that I can actually find around my house that is something that would be the either as good or I can find a different purpose for it? Um, and that is something that I think is so fun about being a minimalist um, is that a lot of times we want that instant gratification of buying the thing and getting exactly the one thing that we need. 
Um, but a lot of times in our house, there are things that have dual purpose if we just think outside the box. And it's kind of fun once you get in the habit of doing it more often. And it also clears up a lot of space so that you're not recluttering those drawers with every different piece of kitchen utensil. Think of, do I have something that I can use as dual purpose? So this is not necessarily dual purpose, but it is me thinking outside the box. Just the other week, I have this trash can in our bathroom that my dog continues over and over again to get in and eat the trash and spread it all over the house and it's disgusting. And for so long, I've just been dealing with it and cleaning up when he gets uh, irritated with us or we leave him a little too long that he'll do this. So I actually started just looking up trash cans that I could lock for the bathroom. And you know, that seems like a very reasonable thing to do. I have a problem, I'm going to find the solution. And it's easy enough to get on Amazon and buy the solution because it was right there. But while I was sitting there on the phone, I started to think, is there something else that I could do that I wouldn't have to go buy something else and then have to figure out what to do with this other trash can and take it to the Goodwill or throw it away and put it in the dump? Is there something else I could do with this trash can right now that would serve the purpose of what I need. And literally, as I'm sitting there, I had an idea. And I just cleared out some space in our cabinet under the sink that's right next to our toilet, and I put the trash can inside. It is so simple, and yet so difficult sometimes for us to think outside the box, create solutions so that we don't have to buy things. Because I think in our culture, it is so easy and so much easier in our head to just go buy the solution. But a lot of times the solution is as simple as putting your trash can in a different location and now my dog can't get in it anymore. Um, so I don't need to go find something else and I don't need to figure out a different solution to get rid of my old trash can. The very last thing is, uh, is something that I've talked about several times on this channel and it's something that uh, seems very simple, but at the same time, when you're first starting to declutter and you're first starting to minimize, it is something that seems complicated. So this is just waiting until things are either broken or they are empty before buying a new one. Now there are two things right now that I know I need to replace. My shampoo has about one more life in it and my soap bar is like that tiny. And so I used it today and it was very useful, but I know I probably have like two more uses before it just completely disappears. So I am starting the look now of I'm looking for shampoo and I am looking for a new soap and I'm trying to find a brand that I really like, that's eco-friendly, that's something that I'm going to feel good about buying, but I'm going to wait until it's done because those two things in particular I know that I will have like two days where I probably don't shower because I don't shower every day. Um, my hair would get way too dry. And so those two days is when I could go and find what I need. So it's on my list, it's in my brain, but it's not something that I need right this moment to immediately get and replace. So it's one of those things that's like, start making a list, start thinking about the things that you need to replace, but you don't need to immediately go out and get it. Now, we are very fortunate, at least most of my watchers out there, I think, that we probably live near some kind of store, we have Amazon that can deliver to us, or Target, and so it's not something that, um, you know, if you're living in Alaska, you might really have to think ahead. You know, if you're not living close to uh, a store, you might really need to think ahead. But for a lot of us, we do live pretty close to a store. We do have a lot of access. So when we constantly feel the need to buy more and more and more so that we don't run out of things because that's our fear, we actually just end up recluttering that space because it is gonna take a little while to actually need that product. And so then we, it just sits there in our closet and takes up unnecessary space. So I would love to hear about maybe some different suggestions of things that you do as a minimalist or someone that's working on decluttering that's really helped you because I think it's great for us to all learn from each other. So if you have any suggestions, put them in the comment below. Remember to hit that subscribe button and my next video is coming out next week and it should be all about how I've created a budget and things that you can use in your budget too. I'll see you next week.